Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of Art of the Beholder, a show dedicated to all things eclectic in the world of art, where we do deep dives into deep cuts and help you understand why damn things matter. I'm your host, Novo Day, and today we're going to be talking about art and music again, specifically through the legacy of one very important duo to us, and that is Daft Punk. Now, we were not planning on talking about Daft Punk this week, but something happened, and now we have to. Joined with me today is our top contributor, Mr. T-Buck. T-Buck, tell the people why we have to talk about Daft Punk today. They broke up. They broke up. They're no more. They're no They're more. more. They no broke vote. up. They're no more. We can't. And I... I pride myself on uh, making this show a positive, a lot of love, a lot of good energy to put out into the world. You know, there's plenty of YouTube channels and other shows that talk about things in terms of controversy. I don't want to do that. I want to talk about Daft Punk as a legacy and a celebration of life. Well, yes, no absolutely. Now, this <laughs> let's be let's be blunt. This is not a deep cut at all. Everybody knows Staff Punk, but it is incredibly important to us music lovers and art lovers and to the community as a whole. So, of course, we're going to talk about it. So, you know, there's really no thesis statement today. Everybody knows that Daft Punk is easily one of the most influential contributors to dance music of all fucking time. I think what's more fascinating is to not only talk about their legacy today and why they are important uh, to the art community and music community as a whole, but also try to think about what happened, what, why, why we got here, how we got here, and why they decided to call it quits. But before, of course, we can do that, we need a little background. They were active in 1993, and the duo consisted of Guy Manuel de Hamim Cristo. What a great Great name, bit of a mouthful. I love it. <laughs> and Thomas. So French. Right. French duo. And uh, so Guy Manuel and Thomas Bankalter. A lot easier to say. Now, originally they played indie music in a band called Darlin. And uh, they did not quite hit it off with Darlin. Uh, doing research for this episode, I found it quite fascinating that the other member of Darlin was now an active member of the band Phoenix. I'm a big Phoenix fan. Oh, did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I I knew there was a connection there, but uh, yeah, Phoenix, I love Phoenix. Yeah, another French band. Good band. So, um, so what ha what happened was that uh, Darlin didn't work out, okay, and yeah. eventually they found the, the their sound and the new direction they wanted to go into with the underground movement that was the French house electronica music movement. And what's great about their legacy and the lore that is Daft Punk is uh they I think they only they put out a little bit of music under Darlin and there was a, a famous review that just tore them to pieces, just shit all over them and they actually called them Daft Punky Trash. And ah. so guess where they got their name for Daft Punk? From that review they wore that they yeah. wore that review as a badge of honor uh for the rest of their it. careers so of course once they changed musical directions they <laughs> they found success quite quite quickly so in the beginning they didn't actually become the robot personas that we know them as now until probably 1999 so again like i said uh mm. they started in 1993 and when things didn't work out with Darlin, they started to make electronic music, and the rest is history. Of course, we're, uh, that's an easy way to put their legacy into a sentence. Of course, we're going to talk about their amazing careers. And uh, they were yeah. not only famous for not wanting to be famous, but like I said, it's, they're easily one of the most influential contributors to dance music of all time. Now, uh, this is where I'm going to bring T-Buck in. We know that... <laughs> Doing our homework, they weren't the very, very beginning. I would argue that they definitely brought uh, definitely house music, electronic music, EDM is what we call it now, obviously, uh, to a commercial yeah. success, uh, to international fame. But obviously, they had people that inspired them. I would argue that number one is craft work. Right, Buck? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, that, that really brought in the electronic kind of music scene, at least mainstream. A little bit or, or you know and in, introduced it to, to the and this is the public. 70s um i mean let's yeah tell yeah, the people yeah. let's give tell the people uh let's 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 frame it right this is not 
yeah 80s 90s electronica this is 70s electronica no kind of the forefathers of and, electronic music is craft work yeah and, and this was still very production or er, uh, performance heavy i mean you didn't have like sampler you know well you had some things you had repeaters and things like that some s- sort of sampling but it was mainly just synthesizers and actually doing a lot of uh patching uh right. to create a lot of your music <laughs> which is still done today i mean you, yes. you can make a lot of different uh weird sounds and a lot of guys are going back especially an electronic scene going to more of those analog synthesizer rigs to kind of create that a little bit more of an organic sounding kind of and I would say of sound. the NDP family, you, Buck, are of the electronic fan, lover, musician in the family. I would say you're probably on top tier. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I <laughs> probably in recent years, I've I backed off of it a little bit and kind of went back to my roots. But um, but I mean, the tech side, talking about stuff like that, the tech side, oh, you've yeah, explored yeah. a lot of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's actually quite fascinating. And you see a lot of the DNA and like once you start like learning about a lot of these machines and hearing sounds, um, you, you can start picking out actually a lot of uh, whether it's electronic or hip hop, you can actually start hearing some of these like really famous synthesizers or drum machines within music. So the Roland 808 is one of the, you know, and the Moogs, the Moogs. Yeah modulators um, things like that so yeah. important to these sounds oh yeah a lot of sounds you know and in some of them they almost you know if you listen to them today they almost sound like toys <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh when you when you listen to them you're like oh my god how do they do it but it also goes back to like when they were using these how good the production was behind the scenes to really absolutely oh my god pick that up a- and so absolutely you have bands like Kraftwerk that really did an amazing job of kind of bringing this to the forefront and really kind of changing what we think of as music. Absolutely. Uh, some other notable predecessors I put on there uh, were Orbital. Uh, Primal Scream was probably more for their Darlin influences. I wouldn't say anything from their electronica round eventual career. And of course, Apex Twin and specifically yeah. Window Liquor. I, I read that they they were incredibly influenced by and Window Liquor is a bit of uh we can go probably through a little bit of a tangent corner here yeah on just window liquor because window liquor is a little different than the normal Aphex twin sound a lot of it's that drilling drum and bass uh, very abstract forms electronic music and window liquor was a little more dancey for once right yeah <laughs> i just remember that beginning that <laughs> and you know and then when they actually go into the main piece it's like you're bobbing your head. You're like, yeah, this is this is some shit right here. A one of my favorite music videos of all time was Window uh, Liquor with the long, Window Liquor, the long limo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's there's so much humor in it. Mine's Come to Daddy. Oh, I love Come to Daddy, which Come to Daddy I apparently was kind of a parody of metal music. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was yeah. just like we're gonna we're we're gonna write like a we're gonna make a horror <laughs> video around well the, the, well, song's the video horror, well the video but the song, song yeah yeah no but uh gosh that's another like one of the biggest like one of my most favorite electronic songs ever of is, all time window liquor yeah I, i'm just i like i had to pull up the cover because the cover just cracks me up too <laughs> of window liquor it's the mr apex twin himself mr richard d james uh, yeah. His head is photoshopped on a large-breasted woman in a bikini. <laughs> he had a sense of humor. He had it. Yeah. It was always this mix of uh, God, crazy dementia, almost in a way, <laughs> dementedness, and this humor. Because he would always put his, his yeah. yeah, he always put this scary, smiling face on on so many of his covers. A lot of his videos would just be these digital headpieces of his face onto a million different bodies, right? Yeah, and one of one of his <laughs> songs actually, sorry, uh, you if you go into a sound, I had to pull it back soon. A- analyzer, ahead. like if you look at a waveform analyzer and you play it through, you he oh yeah, he made his face his face into it, so it just sounds like a lot of white and sounds like just garbled nothing, garbled nothingness. And then when you put it through the analyzer, you can actually see his face. So that's where yeah, and we'll talk about Apex Twin one day. Yeah, in an episode just for him and his career, or maybe just uh, some of some selections, but shit like that is where. I, I would say he's close to brilliant. Like there's a genius oh, yeah. level of shit that we would never be able to figure out that he somehow did with this shit. 
Now I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to pull yeah. it back. The uh, good old fashioned Novo pullback. Uh, before we go into 1997's homework, their first LP, uh, groundbreaking for a lot of different ways, and we'll talk about that. I want to give you the floor one more time. And can you think of any other predecessors to talk about uh, before we go into their specific career? No, I think we've hit on the major ones. I mean, there was a handful of other really popular house uh, music artists that had uh, you know some hits, but they all seem pretty formulaic. Sure. And we can get about into that here in a little bit. Why I think Daft Punk really broke that mold. They had a little bit of that in their first album, but I, I think definitely broke that mold of uh, the generic house uh, beat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's dive. Let's dive right yeah. in. Yes. Yeah. So 1997, uh, they made their very first LP, Homework. Now, Homework mm -hmm. is important because, uh, well. The name specifically is important because as I was doing research for this, I realized there is like every great band, musician, group, whatever, there's usually an evolution to their sound. And they, I don't yeah. know if they did this on purpose or if it was an accident, but them calling that first LP homework was really true to its name because you could mm -hmm. tell when I, so I went back through their entire catalog. I listened to all of their um, amazing fucker records, uh, for this show and homework was clearly that they were trying to figure it out, right? They're trying yeah. to figure out their sound, how they wanted to make these things and also do their best to stand apart. And mm -hmm. my first introduction to homework as a little kid was around the world with that amazing fucking video. Oh yeah. And, uh, the video of the robots and, uh, that was my first introduction to them too. I think this was another like late night uh, MTV. But did you know? So the dance moves are iconic now. But do you mm -hmm. know that there was a purpose behind them? I, no. I I found out some fascinating things in my research. So every dance move is a different musical track. So there's a so there's oh. there's there's a you know would it be the swimmers or whatever would be the bass line, the melody the drum line yada 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 and they would do the dance in unison to what's going on in the song yeah so i didn't I realize to pull that it up here and just to remind myself wow that's how yeah, this is bringing back yeah yep this is what i remember <laughs> bringing the, back memories right yeah i remember the, there's the robots in the corner yep and and the ladies in the like swimsuits with the swim caps the skeletons oh man the one that always stood out to me memories. was like the shrunken head guys like they had some, some sort of like piece yes. on top of on top of obviously their shoulders and head to make <laughs> yeah. these like little head and you could definitely tell that <laughs> i mean they don't hide that and they're wearing track suits right uh, yeah <laughs> this is fantastic yeah so let's just go through some of the singles uh, and then mm -hmm. i'm gonna you know we don't want to spend too much time on just this album because there's so much to talk about so revolution 909 defunct is is often considered one of the best tunes on this album yeah of course, around the world is my. I I have a sweet spot for that for obvious reasons. Like mm -hmm. you said, uh, Burning Indo Silver Club, um, uh, and of, of course, Alive. They've used Alive on oh, all yeah. their live recordings. They'll always use Alive with a date, so that's yep. very important to them too. I mean, yeah, like you said, obviously, Around the World is the big hit off of there. That was the first Daft Punk song I'd ever heard as well. But no, I, I think, you know, with Around the World, especially, you can kind of see what they were, what area they were heading towards uh, with their sure. next album, with their sound wise. I mean, there's some, if you listen to a lot of the music on here, you, you do get some of that, you know, definite house influence, French house influence on some of these songs. Yeah, but, and um, let's, and let's talk about just yeah. the music theory for a little bit, just the sound, because, you know, and it's clear to see the difference when we go into discovery in 2001 because this was more traditional four on the floor i feel like they weren't I, let me say this as part of the thesis to me daft punk has always been songwriters not just yep. beat makers not just you know edm producers that make these long nine ten tracks that essentially is almost the exact same thing they had purposely made intros bridges etc yeah um and but we didn't that, see that until later right yeah and some of that where you get a lot of that formulaic sound is the way that a lot of these musicians structure their songs for clubs and DJs. Right. It's made for them instead of a general audience that may yeah. not go to a club to hear it. Right. Yeah. And you're basically like you're playing only, a, you know, a minute or two of a song 
and that's what kind of matters and it's usually with a drop or a hit you know especially sure. today there's there's always the there's always a build up and there's always a drop fucking right? drop and i like God, dubstep was like you know, everybody that era right goddamn same thing anyway <laughs> but they didn't they wanted to be different and that's but important. they wanted to be different and i, I think that is the great the greatest point that you can bring up about them especially making their own and and why they were so popular is that it, it wasn't formulaic they were they were making tracks that you could listen to absolutely yeah and uh i'm gonna go through their track list on homework real quick so uh daft and direct uh wdpk 83.7 fm obviously like i said revolution 909 defunk phoenix fresh around the world my fucking favorite rolling and scratching teachers high fidelity rock and roll oh yeah burning indo silver club alive and funk ad now as we were talking about these are, yeah, a little more traditional French house sounds. Yep. Uh, it's definitely more leaning on the club. You know, these were made more for the club, more of a niche audience. And it really shines through in the, I would say, in the constructions of the songs, the samples they use, and the editing, mixing, and mastering, right? Yeah. So let's go ahead and move on to Discovery 2001 because this is where we saw them, you know, using more of the vocoder and... I don't even know where to start. Usually I want to start with one more time. <laughs> or should we start with harder, better, faster, stronger? Or little... I, I think one more time because I feel like this song, especially, you heard it on a lot of commercials and things like that, especially for, I think MTV used it as like kind of a. It was, pre- it was the first track. It was the first yeah, track on the yeah. LP, is one more yeah, time. I think too. it's a good introduction. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where we saw uh, not only use of vocoders more, them really making more i mean you can they're still dancey they're still edm they're still electronica techno house whatever whatever adjective you want to give them for for their sound which is another good uh point to make is they're always kind of genre bending they're they're always mixing a lot into the bag and to amazing effect and this is where uh to talk about the music theory a little bit this is where i saw so i would see two melodies and then a counter melody usually we would see what a main melody or one main melody and then a counter melody if you know, I I love Dead Mouse, but he's a perfect example of that very simplistic <laughs> techno EDM kind of formula. Some of his stuff, yeah, I would say he, yeah, he he leaned heavily on that. Um, Don't get us wrong, we remember we're a show about love. We love Dead Mouse. We're not going to shit on anyone uh, or anything for their success, but it's just a perfect example of what kind of construction of a song they're trying to go for, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. Which is funny because I, I think part of Dead Mouse starting out a little bit was kind of making fun a little bit of the formulaic house music that he had been well listening in his uh, things like that. But yeah, his titles <laughs> prove that oh, you know yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. random title or whatever. However he names yeah. his 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 albums is always just like random title here or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think he's yeah he's making fun of it. Uh, but he definitely because I for example when I was thinking about what i wanted to talk about for this show i thought i can think of a dozen daft punk songs where i know the vocals i know where it's where and i can sing them in my head one more time is an easy example of that but i can't really think of one dead mouse song except for maybe i remember but that was with cascade that's not technically i think that's the only <laughs> i think that's the only and, it, and uh, it's her just saying i remember people remember at this point yeah. over and over again <laughs> sorry uh but it's true well that was just an example again that, we, that we movie, like that mouse but i can't really think of any other uh, i i i can't well yeah because you're the you're the house you're the family electronic connoisseur. i know yeah well, electronica there was a point in time where I thought it was going to change everything, and then everybody copied it, and just like disco in the U.S., right? Well, we saw, you know, a lot of people have complaints like, you know, no one's making new music. It's just because we're yeah. living through people doing that now. Because when you look at the last 10 years, it was just really all in EDM. Like, the EDM's like an umbrella, but we had dubstep underneath that, different kinds of house, yeah. different kinds of techno, electronica. Yeah. And... There was new things being made. It's just we were living through them, so we didn't really, we weren't able to really analyze them in real time, right? Yeah, and I think, I think a lot of it is, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of new music and there's a lot of great music being made, 
you have to look a little bit harder. You have to dig. Oh my god, you have, you to, have to fucking dig. And, <laughs> and we like I like digging here. Yeah, so. whatever's popular and what's on the radio, if people even still listen to the radio or on your Spotify, you know, new release mixes and stuff like that. They're always going to focus on that formulaic thing because that's what sells and that's where they make money because people sure, yeah. like the catchy tunes written by mainly a, one Swedish dude or a collection of Swedish <laughs> dudes that and make like, uh, all the pop music right now. Right. That's I'm going to pull it back to Daft yeah. Punk because uh, this is a good segue to lean on the fact that we never felt that way about them, right? There was never really – they have their own sound for sure. And yeah. uh, I, I, you know – let's let's be honest it's still a business they you know they still wanted to find success and financial success but i don't feel like they had to they didn't have to to do that right they didn't they they had they leaned into their artistic integrity let's move on to the album aerodynamic is great uh digital love (laughs) is pretty much an a down tempo yeah just a song you know it's not (laughs) uh i i'm a big big fan of digital love and then of course the big big fucking hit harder better faster stronger what what talk about um the art in terms again of music theory and layering of music i know a lot of it's sampling and stuff like that but i when i was listening to this again i was like oh my i feel like i find something new every time i listen to it right like you said with the sampling thing i mean all the words are uh individually sampled on to their own track and then they're basically being pressed by a button so sure. work it harder, better, you know, all of that is. And that's actually like a keyboard, really, you know, when yeah, like a slide. keyboard. And it, it's actually very impressive to think about it because I've I've actually tried doing this when with uh, one of my it's, um, it's so much harder than it looks. That's why they're musicians at the end of the yeah. day. They're still musicians. It they're not just samplers. Practice. It's not just like, you know, press and play, as uh, right. Dead Mouse said, in the end, we all press play um, there. Like I said, there's still some production and, and some uh, performance value to this. Um, but yeah, the layering of sounds like it starts out pretty simple uh, with, you know, the uh, uh, the kind of the backing track and like that whole layering of sound. They're just layering top like basically loops on top of each other. And then it builds up um, with with the uh, the harder, better, faster, stronger kind of structure of the of sure. the words. But again, it, it in in theory, when you think about it, it's a very simple thing, especially if one of you have ever played around with a, a sound machine or a sampler, you know, a drum machine. It's really easy to start out those drum beats and then you kind of layer everything on top of that. It's a very structured. In yeah. That way. I think the, how, how should we put it? The, the creation of these things is simple. Like the technical aspect of just layering tracks is, is simple, but to do making it in it such work. a, yeah, <laughs> making it work and making it sound good and musical. Yeah. Yep. And then putting it into the framework of an arrangement. So, you know, they exactly. still have intros, verses, essentially, even though they may not actually have vocal elements there. The verses mm-hmm. are still the, the change in the structure of the arrangement, right? And oh, then, yeah. of course, yeah. you go back into the choruses and then the bridge and then your your verse, chorus, verse, chorus, outro, right? So yeah. it's still it's still something you connect to. And you, when you hear that change, you're like, okay, I like this part. Here's a change. And then it helps for that tension back into the chorus, right? Exactly. And and this song even shot bigger into the stratosphere or higher into the stratosphere. With Kanye. Me. Yeah. With Kanye. Yeah. With the Thundershades. And this is not a deep cut. Like everybody at this point should know that he they were producing Kanye stuff. But this was hype. Black Skinhead's hype. probably my favorite one. What's that? Sorry. Black Skinhead is Black skinhead. my favorite okay. uh, I, Daft Punk produced song. I I did not know that. I'm pretty sure. Someone correct us. Tweet at us if I'm wrong. It's okay. We, we're but wrong I, about a lot of shit. This is like Pete Kanye for me. This is... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. This is Graduation album. I was trying to look and make sure where this was at. Um, stronger. Yep, it was Graduation. Uh, this is like peak, uh, peak pink polo Kanye. Um, <laughs> Such a perfect way to put it. <laughs> my favorite Kanye, Kanye era. Kanye, I know. Your, your favorite Kanye era, right? Oh it's God, I, I just love that whole like that. Just that whole like graduation college, you know, trilogy or oh, or, that's uh, fucking great. Uh, series was great. That was before Kanye was um, a fashionista. Well, <laughs> I don't know how to put it. <laughs> selling I, I, selling a hundred dollar 
blank white t-shirts online that that well, kanye well yeah i mean it, it was kanye kanye's always been kanye but like yeah he know this is i think this is before i love the you whole... as much kanye loves kanye it's probably my favorite <laughs> line about him i love you yep. as much as kanye loves kanye loves kanye yeah we love and... kanye again we're not gonna shit on anybody's success here no you know, I, kanye's I, great he is he's a character i think we're talking about that well, right. yes, and I I do think he's such a larger there's a whole mental character. health issue that and I I don't want to get yeah. into that. Yeah, we're I, not, I do yeah, think he is not, still like no matter sure. the politics or you know his personality, you cannot deny his his uh, genius, his musical genius, genius as a producer. Absolutely. If you look back at his work and especially what he did with Jay Z and a lot of these oh my god uh, hip hop artists, it's, so great, it's brilliant. Yeah, I mean absolutely. It's just his, yeah, it, clearly his persona, his personality started to overshadow his work. So, and then we want to, we want to focus on his work here, right? His yeah, work we want to focus on telling. his work. And you can always kind of balance that out. Like Prince is one that I can think of that did it to perfection or Bowie. Yeah. Or McCartney or. McCartney, yeah. yeah. I mean. There's again. a, there's a long list. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to go down that rabbit hole. We'll it, be yeah. here all fucking day. Hey, so let's pull it back to uh to discovery 2001 we got crescent dolls uh after track number four night vision superheroes high life something about us voyager i think something. voyager is what well i was gonna say something about us again it's another kind of just song is this is a song yeah we're starting song. to see songs yeah yeah uh and definitely like face to face is as much mm -hmm. as it's dancey it's it's just like a really good song i really yeah. liked uh i think it was todd edwards vocals is that the guy uh, yes it the was vocals? todd edwards yep and um but there's a lot of instrument okay you know uh daft punk is big for doing you know just instrumental traditional dance tracks or just just comp honestly at this point when i really analyze them they're just like these very fascinating musical compositions. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're not even dancey. They're just wanting to play with these different sounds and soundscapes and stuff like that. Uh, and I think uh, Voyager, Verdi, Verdis Quo, or Verdi Quo, however you pronounce that. I feel like the only one that didn't age too well, that just didn't land for me when I was listening to this again, was probably Short Circuit. Just yeah. because of that really weird intro uh, melody line, that wah, wah. Thing. <laughs> i was listening to it yesterday again too and i was just like it just didn't it just it felt yeah. a little out of place but then it's it's kind of like I've, I've noticed this about oh here's i got a little novo uh, tangent i've noticed this about amazing amazing albums mm -hmm. is there's um it may be like 99 percent or nine 90% perfection, just great songwriting, amazing. And then there's always that one tune that sticks out that you kind of skip sometimes. Yep. Like yep. Uh, a lot of people, easy examples is Dark Side where they have uh, the great gig in the sky. I actually, that's one of my favorite ones, but sometimes they don't want to hear that, that, that jazzy vocal solo, right? Oh, I kind of love that song. I, I, I love that song. Uh, and another example is... Um, I, I actually, big... I, love, I love singing to that. <laughs> i know i know He's, we've done it many times drunk yeah. together when we're nerding out on music uh but <laughs> i want to play but, it in a bar and just be like i i just i i know that somebody in has just sat in the back in a in a booth just been like belting that like out. if you were doing karaoke or something and you're like of all the songs <laughs> you would pick you'd pick that one it's like just that to one be, guy make people like their eyes are like flaring and like look, everyone's looking at each other like is this guy for fucking for real yeah it's like it, it's like that one guy that went viral for doing tequila at a karaoke uh bar that was which was great my other my other example before i forget is um synchronicity the police there is a track right in the middle that i almost always skip i mean it's a good yeah. track but i'm i think it's just called mother uh, there's is this does it quite land it stick it really sticks out like a sore thumb and for some reason it is mother track four i just looked it up track yeah. four mother just and that every other song is like a perfectly crafted song like jesus christ i don't want to go on it too far on a tangent but that's just anyways the point is is that like there's something about someone really taking risks i mean they're already yeah. already taking risks making these things and then they always there's always these musicians that have that one or one or two tracks on the album that just don't fit for some you know we we did a episode on kid a and i honestly think kid a is that song on that mm. album yeah i think kid a always just sounds off every time i hear it 
and I usually skip it if I'm not in the mood just to listen to the whole thing straight through. Well, yeah, it kind of it kind of throws you. It, it's it's like throwing a wrench into a well oiled machine kind of thing. But for good effect, I think at the beginning, it you know, works. like the first time yeah. you want to hear it, it's like, oh man, this is this is so different, and you can mm-hmm. see that the risks are trying to take. Before we move into 2005's Human After All, which is a little departure from some of the sounds we've been seeing in the first two albums, Mr. Buck, is there anything you want to touch on before we move on? Yeah, so this Ooh. was obviously the era where they started wearing the T-Buck robot Tangent costume. Corner? Oh, it's yes, t- okay. Well, well, it was 1999. It two was years 99. before that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so they started wearing this, but one thing I wanted to bring up is... Daft Punk had this these amazing helmets, and you've seen the videos where they would have messages going across, right? And uh, that LED lighting and stuff. Yeah, and and obviously that was really cool. But now every other they they kind of started a trend that I started to kind of hate a little bit, which was every EDM artist had to wear some sort of mask. And uh, I don't try to basically really. Copy. I don't feel like I felt that way. Well, there there was or quite a few. I didn't see it them. enough. Yeah, like, I like, think there was. A, I'm gonna put you on the spot, like who? Just give well, me one. I, I, think won't, I won't. The, the, I won't make you squirm too much. <laughs> well, I like no, to make but, squirm. No, but you saw a lot of people doing this, w- whether it was just like wearing. Oh, I mean, uh, a dead mouse example. is is a good example. Okay, well, yeah, dead of, mouse with a big mask or marshmallow. Yeah. yeah. Um, now some I people like did those it better are than a little others, different. But. Yeah, I feel like those are a little different. Yeah, but you saw a lot of people doing kind of a costume type thing. Um, which I think is okay, um, but yeah, that, they're yeah, just doing. There was a little bit thing. of copy. They didn't want to be famous things. too. I, I I like to touch on that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's it's this was a, like there was a purpose. The one person that I I think that did it really really well, Mad is a Mad villain. Yeah, Mad villain. Yeah. No, or, or no, uh, you're talking about um, that was his album, Mad villain. Yeah, I'm, you're talking I'm about the rapper. Man. Yeah. Uh, uh, MF Doom, sorry. MF Gosh. Doom, yeah. I, was, I, I I had Doom in my head, and then I was like, oh man, I'm blanking <laughs> some, now. Somebody's oh, yeah. going to like jump I think, out and like Jesus, stab me. Jesus, talk about because, a tangent corner. I think yeah. one, some of the best rapping hip-hop I've seen in decades is MF Doom. Oh, like, MF Jesus Doom. Jesus Christ, he was like a poet. It's your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Right. So, um, and I love MF That's Doom. a perfect way to put um, it, Buck. Uh, perfect. It's, his, I love listening to his music. And rest in peace. He he uh, just yeah. passed recently, as well uh, back in October. But that's another person who handled that that really well. Wore the wore the um, the mask from uh, Gladiator. Yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, definitely nice. check his stuff out. But yeah, no, I I felt like, and I can't point out specific examples, but you saw a lot of like random musicians kind of do this. You know, some some did it better than others. I, I think of. Uh, electronic musicians like burial who burial yeah oh yeah he hasn't even shown he his has like a me- he has like a whole meme following because of yeah. how, how much he does not want his face to be well seen nobody really like knows that. who he is yeah i mean yeah. i think they, like a banksy they, or i something think they too. now know now who he kind of is or they, they his name's out there um but i thought yeah. uh, no i thought he revealed i thought like i i'm pretty sure we, i think we can pull up spotify right now and see a picture of him on yeah his... i think no i've seen a picture of him but i think originally when he started out it was very you know kind of cryptic secret, i don't want to be cryptic known. yeah let's pull it back uh to daft punk i actually as we were talking about that i realized i did have more to say about this era of uh discovery 2001 because this is when we started to see more of the animation uh crossover like you know multimedia type of stuff and we saw their animated film interstellar 5555 the story of the secret star system and we saw their first mix uh remix collection called daft club a little couple years later actually some good (laughs) remixes in that yes i i listened to the whole thing it's uh, they're not all landers but they're not all bangers they're not all bangers, but there was some that I was like, fuck yes, this is great. Yeah, there's uh, um, but was, was not think- so great was human after all. Do you like that segue? Uh, um, a lot of this one gets criticized a lot because and I will I will testify that there was a lot of really good ideas, but not fully formed um yeah. pieces. Well, I yeah, but, I will but say there's a happy ending. 
happy ending here, and we're only going to talk about that with the live 2007. But let's talk about what just human after all. Yeah, I, I would say you know the two that stick out for me, human after all, are robot rock and technologic. I yeah, still think everybody. technologic yeah, is a banger. I mean, I listened to it yesterday, and I was getting getting pretty excited when I was listening to it. But yeah, I would say <laughs> a lot of the uh, the other tracks on this are kind of a skip. I think I have an ex part of an explanation for why this was. You may not have, you may not know this, Buck, or anybody listening to this. Uh, this was only made in six weeks. Oh, really? It was a little rushed. Yeah, that's part of the reason they were like, "You guys needed more time to flush, you know, flush these ideas out." That so, that makes sense, and sometimes that happens. That's a little bit of the explanation as to yeah. Going back to the police, you know, uh, Zenyatta Mandata, one of my favorite police albums, was made really short, like, you know, six to eight weeks, something like that. Yeah. Since I was just talking about them. Uh, so it can, it can work. There's a lot of musicians that they don't need a lot of time. Like, they're just sitting on gold in their head all the time, and they just got to get it out. I always think yeah. of, like, Paul McCartney or someone like that that just keeps, like, they just cannot stop writing stuff, right? It's just, like, endless, endless, endless writing. Yeah, or, like, Alice Cooper, who just is basically <laughs> you're talking about Alice out. Cooper last <laughs> did we talk oh yeah that's right yeah <laughs> I was just like pumping Buck stuff has, out Buck has Alice Cooper on the mind he can't stop talking he's gonna talk I, he's gonna try to fit him into every episode well it's just it's just like these <laughs> these old dudes that are you know I'm trying to think and and, and well this kind of relates to this a little bit when as they they've broken up you know if you look at Daft Punk their discography is is fairly small it's yes, I do want to talk about that, and a lot yeah. of the extra stuff around it is really just remixes. Yeah, is them just like re repackaging stuff they've already made, but just some amazing effect. Again, mm -hmm. that's I I cannot wait to talk about Alive 2007 because that's one of my favorites. But before we get there, uh, let's go through the rest of the uh, Human After All, uh, and that's yeah, the first track is Human After All, the prime time of your life. That's a pretty big hit too. Of course, Robot Rock is. Buck said, uh, Steam Machine, Make Love, The Brainwasher, On Off, Television Rules the Nation, Technologic. Yes, that's a big hit from this, and Emotion. Mm -hmm. So they did have some bangers, as you like to put it, but just not enough for a whole yeah. album. Yeah, and, and I would say this was kind of the, the era, you know, obviously just a couple of songs off of this album, but this was the era that I really fell in, where I fell in love with Daft Punk was this really kind of, uh, I didn't know that well not not really this but I'm, I'm I'm thinking their last this and their last album Discovery you know that was really you know when we were going out to the bars in college and I would be walking from my uh tenement house uh that I lived in to to the bars that was like it's kind of like my baseball walk up <laughs> soundtrack I would be listening to Discovery <laughs> and, and parts of of Human After All, kind of to get me on my iPod Nano, you know, kind of get me worked up uh, and sneak into uh, <laughs> to the back of the bar that you and I used to hang out at. And um, and this, I do think this is a good point to talk about. Yes, we we used to put these albums on as the soundtrack to the night, right? Like yeah. I don't know how many parties we threw that. We would just put on a couple of these albums, and that was it. We would just put them on shuffle, or well, we didn't have a lot of shuffle back then, but like just repeat, just over and over again. Oh yeah. And um, well, I remember you guys had that. Um, what was it? A six, six disc? Oh yeah, like old boom boxes. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it was like I think we put in Daft Punk, and then the one for the ladies which was future love sex future sound. sex love sounds by future justin timberlake and for hey for a pop album that's a good fucking pop it's a album. good it's a good album can't hate on us the ladies loved it every you it was sexy it was, back so well it was basically it was a crowd pleaser yeah at that point everyone yeah. liked it you, you have to you had to play something for everybody too right yeah yeah so uh before we get into their era where they went a little away from studio albums they did a soundtrack for tron legacy i do want to talk about daft punk's electroma or electrama which is a little like think short that i don't know if you knew this either buck but um they used footage from this for that epilogue video for their oh announce the announcement that they are saying goodbye to us oh did you know that i did not know that 
Well, so, uh, so, this so is everybody out there listening, speculation, then. yeah, so everybody out there listening, hold on to that for a little bit. Just put that in the back of your mind. We'll come back to that later. But for now, we need to talk about Tron Legacy 2010. And there's always been a part of Daft Punk. This is how I'm going to uh, frame this discussion. There's always been a part of Daft Punk that was epic. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an epicness to their songwriting, and we saw that easily in Tron Legacy in 2010. I am jumping. I I, I am jumping it's, the gun here. I do still want to talk about Alive 2007, but I want to talk about this just because it was a major departure. Oh yeah, they used entire string sections. They had orchestras uh, help them create the music, uh, and there was. Uh, as a standalone just musical piece it's uh, it's absolutely amazing i mean mm-hmm. it fits the, the movie very well and the movie i would say is kind of lackluster compared to the music right it's, i mean uh it's it's like you know when we we used to go see a lot of movies together i used to say it was just a it's a bowl of okay it's a bowl. <laughs> i what, what i say now is <laughs> when i feel that way about something i say it's a solid okay like that's a yeah. solid okay it's, like not bad it's not bad it's just yeah, a solid okay. It's a fine. It's I feel like okay. okay and fine get a bad rap. Like people automatically think, oh, so you think it's shit. No, it just things can be fine. Things can be a, a solid okay, right in the middle, neither bad nor amazing, right? Yeah, my favorite part of this movie, it's it's just Jeff Bridges being Jeff Bridges. <laughs> he's like, what? He's tell, just, tell he's the good the people full. what that means. Elaborate. Well, I, I think, you know, if anything, ever since uh, the big Lebowski, he is yeah. just... He's went the turning full point, dude. You, you and, know, yeah, the the turning that's, point that's in his career fine. that he will never be able to. That's but he kind of wears me. that that role, I think. As a, I as want, a I want him in that in westerns. He was, I loved him in um in, in True in Grit. Some of the re- True Grit, yeah, yeah, he was definitely that guy. Yep. There's not a lot of I want to say beyond that about Tron Legacy because I want to touch a lot on their a combination of their older sound which was alive so is there anything else you want to touch on before we or before i really nerd out no i'll let you do that i i just like like you said i think i think the soundtrack was fitting and they were a fitting group to kind of guide that with tron i actually like the soundtrack quite a bit but uh um, yeah i would say yeah the movie was just a, a bowl of okay um, bowl of okay <laughs> I think they were really wanting to move it on to like a, you know, make it kind of into a new series. Disney was really, yeah, to find and it just something. didn't land. And it, right, it just it didn't, didn't land. land. Yeah. The bad casting and, yeah, yeah. So, um, in two thousand seven, they went on their live two thousand six two thousand seven tour, but there wasn't a live rendition of it that we could, you know, digest, you know, on Spotify or whatever we use now till 2007 and it was essentially like we me and buck said it was just a remix of all of their previous three albums and you know i made a point to say that they had a lot of really good ideas on human after all but it wasn't fully realized and yeah. talk about fucking becoming fully realized on a live i think this is their a one of their magnum opuses i i think this to this day they this is probably one of the best remixed live electronic albums of all time period <laughs> go ahead get it out i could see <laughs> t bucks needing to sneeze so, could you hear uh, it though i couldn't hear it no no, no. okay I hear it. I, We're it was good. a successful you nailed yes yeah. you nailed i was nailed like it, my oh man. my gosh i'm trying to hold this i in. just wanted to tease you i just want to tell everyone that i know. You know he was like extra silent for a while because he like had to he had to really leave the room almost but anyway, so to uh, so alive 2007. I want to. This is where I, I want to get a little more analytical about mm-hmm. things that we absolutely have no, nothing. We don't know any of the details about, including why they decided to walk away from yeah. being Daft Punk. And I want to start here um, because I have always thought it is so good. It is such a good fucking remixed album yeah. that I think there's some ghost writers we've never known about. Like they had to sign some NDAs. Like this is because here's here's my lay it on me reasoning for my my evidence, if you will, for why I think that. Because there's other remix albums already. There's Daft yeah. Club, and I think there was another Alive one, and it sounded very Daft Punk. It sounded like the way they like to write pieces and and construct mm-hmm. them. This one doesn't sound like anything they've ever made before or after. And I I want to theorize that there was. Maybe a team of writers, ghost writers, if you will, that had to sign NDAs. 
What do you think about that shit? I don't know about that. You think it's still them? Explain. Explain. Uh, elaborate, please. Okay. Okay. So uh, we already talked about the fact that you know they use more I'm traditional. The, the, let take a you know let this marinate a little. Bit. Yeah, let it marinate. Okay, I'll talk about my reasoning behind it. More evidence. So um, there's not only they've they've evolved from homework to discovery to human after all in their songwriting capabilities. But of course, they knew that they had to play this for a live audience, and it's it's this is the famous pyramid performance. They only did one show in the U.S., and that was a surprise show at Coachella. Another sidebar: I had a friend that went to that really? to that Coachella year, and his wife at the time like made him leave early, mm. and then Daft Punk played. That's and like he 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 never forgave her. They actually divorced. It's not for that reason, but I don't think it helped. <laughs> they divorced because <laughs> because of the yeah, because of that, right? And couldn't watch Daft Punk. But Daft Punk was like this particular friend that will remain nameless. It was like his favorite band or favorite group, whatever you want to call it of all time. And he missed the show of a lifetime. Now there's, there's, that is not from a live 2007. That was from their Paris show, is what I read. Now, anyways, oh, okay. the um, I think the construction of the pieces, you know. You know, yes, as we were very accustomed to the buildups and drops now, but they did it to an amazing effect back then. Remember, this was this was before we had, you know, Skrillex and people like people that had Vegas, you know, daily shows. This is before a electronic act, an EDM act was considered a headline. Headline, yeah. Right? So they had to not only construct these as songs and do a remix of all three albums you know, over, I think, 15 years of material, um, make them into, you know, a, a little over hour, hour, hour and a half to two hour show. But they had to have build ups, drops and still make it musical and still make them sound like cohesive songs, you know, with intros, bridges, outros, etc. And I feel like they nailed it to like a perfect extent. Like, I, I just have never quite seen anything as well done as this that's why i think there was there was they had some help going back to this you you're having a live album of uh electronic uh music groups live album you you actually produce that it's it's a it's kind of a weird concept if you think about it like right because it wasn't really live live you know they yeah. had to construct yeah. it before they had to construct it yeah before and, <laughs> they presented it to the audience go ahead yeah no but i i can see that I, I mean it is it is great to listen to i i i was picking up some of the tracks yesterday i think the television rules the nation uh yeah. part of it oh yeah it, to me sticks out but yeah it, it, it's it's interesting I, i'm gonna have to so through through this lens that you've 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 shown me that you I've think that there's some yeah. underwriters some some maybe they had a little bit of help I'm going to have to go back through and listen to this and, and kind of, you know, okay. Think okay. About we'll put it. it on pause. Maybe we'll talk about it in a, in a later episode or something like that. Yeah. Because, because I really want to kind of, kind of see if I can pick things out, but it wouldn't surprise me just because of the production that went into it and, and what they had to do. Sure. I know I'm, I'm still thinking how they did a lot. I know with their masks, they only had a tiny hole they could really see out of. And so, didn't they for yeah, their live they stuff famous, they had to kind of memorize know, where things Yeah. Were? Well, this is the thing about EDM and live shows. A lot of them are not playing anything live, right? We we know this at at this point. Except some do, for a few. Some do uh like a flying girl lotus. talk, yeah. flying lotus. Some do uh but a lot of them yeah, construct them as before what? and then they just kind of they may they may like do faders and slow down stuff, speed up stuff. Was it Steve Aoki who got caught and he was basically up on a pedestal and he was acting like he was turning a whole bunch of knobs and stuff and then somebody was videotaping him and he wasn't even touching anything? I don't, I don't know. I don't. Follow I can't remember. But of that somebody famous got community. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't follow enough for of that community. Pressing play. Yeah, I thought it was um, something three something mafia. I forgot what their the band's name is. The they're, they're broken mafia? up now. Swedish yeah, House Swedish Mafia? House Mafia. Yeah, that's. I it. think they might have gotten caught with it. I too. think I, they got caught just like smoking and drink because they were hard partiers. I think back then <laughs> and they were just like like smoking and drinking, and someone 
somehow got a picture of them in their little booth and they were doing nothing. They were just yep. kind of like, yep, we're here. Paid. <laughs> we get showed up. We showed up. Yeah. Um, so, yes. So please do yourself a musical fucking favor. Everybody listening out there and listen to a live 2007. Please do. So that moved on to them taking a break from studio albums. We already talked about Tron's Legacy 2010, which was a huge departure in their sound. And then a little bit of a return to form, but also another evolution. They went back to dance music, but this is this is the second magnum opus. I think this is the true magnum opus because this was all original content and it was completely built from the ground up. So there was, I think there was almost no sampling at all except for a couple of parts. And that is Random Access Memories 2013 with the famous hit Now Get Lucky. Yeah, I think this was their if if I'm looking back at it in hindsight, this was definitely their swan song. Yeah. I guess a swan now now that they're broken up, it's it's yeah, it's officially it definitely a swan is, song. But like yeah. It it almost seems like they were kind of po- it, especially if you go through the album, it was almost like they were posing it just because of the way it was structured. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but they were interviewing people. Giorgio um remind me of Mar- his last Maroder. Name. Maroder. Yeah. Um, kind of getting, you know, his ideas on how that you, you could definitely feel like they were explaining kind of why they made this album and their influences over the years of why they love this genre of music so much. Yes, absolutely. It's it's a bit of a if you haven't listened to the album, it's a bit of a history lesson, you know, because yeah. uh Giorgio Moroder has an entire <laughs> he talks about his career getting started in the industry. Mm-hmm. I don't know who Giorgio Moroder is also. Um just a quick little tangent on him i mean he's one of uh talk about a deep cut now this is definitely a deep cut he is probably one of the greatest electronica producers of all time yep he's produced famous hits from donna summers to uh, a lot of a lot of things that you probably had no idea who was behind the scenes kind of crafting the music to some famous vocalist or something like that donna summers is the easiest example it Mm -hmm. was Giorgio moroder in the what is it 70s Yep. That's late 60s, 70s, and even I think 80s and and I think he probably took a break in the 90s and now, but um he was he he has a long, long history of of producing a lot of stuff. And he was arguably one of the first to really create that four on the floor kick track. Um that he instead of using as just a tempo uh gauger, he just left it in the track. And that's why we use it to this day. Yeah. No, it's huge profound influence on a lot of uh, music from one single person and um so let's go through the album real quick again we're not going to spend a ton of time on the individual tracks we're going to talk about do you remember ahead. when when they announced this album yeah I, I was one of the few that saw the original marketing which was like their saturday heads night live on saturday night live yeah, yeah. for one of their com- their, their I, commercial spots i think we I was texted like, each that? other like at the same the time we were yeah, like, I was like whoa because there was no <laughs> well here's the thing there was no like there was no framing around it it just it no. was just their he- their a picture of their helmets like on the cover of the album mm-hmm. and random access memories they wrote, it wrote they didn't out. give a date yeah. they didn't they didn't <laughs> it was just that it was and just like it was to just put in your lucky. head like yeah or in something like that yeah 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 they were playing get lucky oh in yeah the they, they were playing the track get lucky right but nobody knew what they were saying some people thought he's that pharrell was singing like uh something about a monkey right right yeah but but i remember this <laughs> because clearly that, yeah. people we hadn't heard a daft punk album in so long and the internet just went crazy they actually were pulling so it was eight years eight years. yeah they were pulling the sound out of the commercial and we're looping it to make it yep, like its own right. song. That sounds fucking right. <laughs> because everybody was like, oh, this is so cool. I want to break it up. So I remember going to YouTube channels and people were re-editing and cutting it into like a three-minute song from that, what, 30 seconds. I think I even remember like someone doing it so much. It was like an hour-long YouTube video. Of just oh, yeah. <laughs> <loop>. It's something <laughs> like, like where it was like a 10-hour loop yeah, of Get I Lucky. Like I think we have enough. I think we have enough Get Lucky music. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's let's go through it real quick. So, uh, give life back to music is the first song on the LP, "The Game of Love," uh, Giorgio by Maroder, like we were just talking about, a little history lesson. But within "Instant Crush," and I'm gonna start talking about probably the. There's a lot of collaborations on this. Oh yeah, 
Niles Rogers, of course, of uh, Chic fame, did a lot of the Freak guitar out. work. <laughs> right. <laughs> Instant Crush was sang by Julian Casablancas of uh, the Strokes fame. Lose Yourself to Dance, of course, for Pharrell Williams, who also did Get Lucky. Touched by Paul Williams, Beyond Motherboard, and A Return of Todd Edwards on Fragments of Time. Panda Bear from Animal Collective was on Doing It Right. And there was the Ender Contact. And um, the album is... It's so musical. It's so bright with mm-hmm. the music theory they use. It's still dancey. It's so wonderful. It makes you happy. Yeah. I, I would say, and, and this is where, again, I'm going to get a little bit into uh, my conspiracy theories, if you will, mm, uh, and a little okay. analysis of why they decided to call it quits after this one. But before we go into that, uh, I just want to talk about the art first. Mm-hmm. It's... It's so moving. Uh, Here's is where I'm going to pass it to T-Buck, actually, is uh, when I was re-listening to the album, they constructed the songs not only in traditional song structure. They they did take a lot of risks and liberties in that traditional song structure motifs. And I would actually liken it to classical movements. A lot of their songs, Uh like pure instrumental tracks, were like classical movements to me. Yeah, I can see that now. Fuck. Yeah put me on the spot again i like to make him squirm no i i i think you're right and you know i'm trying to think of you know some good examples here but i guess you know as you're saying giorgio that, by maroder that track yeah giorgio by i was gonna say giorgio by maroder is 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 something like, like that but it's like a classical song almost well just in their arrangement let with me, their let me arrangements make that clear. Yeah. yeah how no. they put pieces together and and you know maybe that was it like i i, I want to hear your conspiracy theory here but You know, part of what I always thought about this album, too, is that they were wanting to really show that they're not just doing samples and they were they were trying to really make a point that, no, we're actually real musicians. And there was a renaissance stage stage. A lot of a lot of uh, other acts like Justice, you know, were doing a little more disco y sounds like there was a little renaissance, a rebirth. Yeah, there was a rebirth in that sound. Um, and, and, And the cool thing was, you know, them bringing back. You know, as you said, this was a, a major collaboration with a lot of different players, but like bringing somebody like Nile Rogers in, um, yeah. who had a huge influence on a lot of the sound back in the 70s in that Sheet. disco area. Fucking Sheet. David Bowie's Let's Dance. Yeah. Nile who, Rogers. Yeah. Who's so. been, you know, has, has been a studio mu- musician as well for a long and time. Producer. So, yeah. And producer. So it, it was cool to see that and him kind of being brought back and in the light that he deserves um with a lot of this music um but but yeah so i i have the um the deluxe like vinyl right vinyl set yeah and no i knew that this would be something special and it definitely is and it but it's so it's kind of weird to me too that a lot i think a lot of people now because i think this rock brought them into the you know really into the forefront of a lot of people um especially with lucky get lucky was like overplayed to a point i think i remember you saying that that summer i was still like my song of the summer and you're like i'm over it man yeah i just felt like i was hearing it all the time and i love get lucky like now i look i hear it again but it was the song of the summer that year but yeah i mean it's it's such a contrast to their previous albums um it's interesting that i think a lot of people will think of this album as their sound whereas yeah. me i'm, I'm always going to like kind of discovery discovery yeah. yeah or alive yeah so let me go ahead and dive into my conspiracy theory hold on let me get my um i need to get my tinfoil hat <laughs> it's not really a conspiracy okay Where's i'm it just at? trying to it's it's uh that's in you know our fucking lexicon so much that no it's more of like uh just analyzing why they decided to call it quits so but when our pre-show talk, uh, Buck said that, you know, they may have just been ready to call it quits. I agree with that. You know, there's a lot of musicians that are ready just to retire. You know, we yeah. can look at it that way. I want to also, and, and it was partly that probably, but I also want to think that they were bored uh, and not in a bad way, just in a artistic way. Like the example I use is, a perfect example is is Kubrick. Now he famously mm. did 
different films every time. You know, he never just did a, you know, the same kind of film every time is because he was so smart, such a brilliant filmmaker that he wanted to challenge himself. He wanted to make something new every time to see if he could one do it and see how successful and and see what kind of art he could come from it. And I think in that vein that Daft Punk got to that point. They're like, we have made everything we want to make. Because I think if they kept making albums, it would just it would still be successful, but they would they've already are at the top of their game. There's there was nowhere to go instead of except retire. Yeah, in 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 some cases, you know, to that point, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing when um bands do that and don't overstay their welcome. Sure. You know, you've seen this in other cases like John Stewart. You know, I was thinking of him. The, the comedian John Stewart. Like yeah, the he quit show? the Daily Show when he was as popular as ever. But when I think of a comedian doing this, I think of Seinfeld from the '90s when they were well, just like, we're, Ch- "We're gonna give you a million Chappelle. dollars to make or Chappelle." Yeah, they're yeah. just like, "Nope, this is I not. This is not challenging anymore. This, yeah, the art isn't there." So I think you know, in, in some ways, I respect them a lot for doing this. Yeah, you know, and they, and it's not like they haven't been doing anything. But if you think about it, I mean, they haven't released an album in almost eight years. So, right. No, it's been eight years. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I. Almost. I am not um I'm not really that shocked or I'm bummed out um definitely right but... I think we would all be happy to have more Daft Punk music till the end of time yeah but, but I, they haven't done a lot other than producing which is just fine I I, I think yeah they're you know, still working they're, they're still just work, producing and other they're people's still work be working you just, know famously the weekend and Starboy yeah you know that was yeah. their 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 I think first number one. Hit, uh, yeah. hit on just like a regular billboard it's not like yeah. on a dance or you know electronic billboards or something like that and, and you've seen this with other and artists Jesus, too. like i said earlier yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah they've they've done a lot of like a lot of pr- production work and you know if that's all they you know that, that's kind of their interest now then i'm happy for them go for it yeah let them um, yeah again this is not this is a show about their legacy or an episode yeah. about their legacy not we are not bummed or upset or we're not going to be one of those listeners. We're grateful. We're grateful that we have this amazing o- almost 30 years of, of music collaboration and music to still, you know, it's, it's going to be archived forever. So, yeah. Yeah. So no, go out and top. I, I, I have a feeling like every band that breaks up. Yeah. They, uh, it's not that, that was my other theory is that we're not going to see the end of them. There, there may be more. Kind of like Nine Inch Nails, like we we're huge Nine Inch Nails lovers here at NDP, and me and Buck saw their like wave goodbye tour. Remember that? Like we're done, yeah. and then they've made an hesitation marks and three EPs. Like the point is, and don't get me wrong, I love that they came back, and mm-hmm. uh, we're gonna talk about LCD LCD sound system a little later when we talk about um, inf- influences or not that influences. Punk's playing like, at my house, yeah of who they and who Daft Punk influenced. But uh that was another example of, you know, we're done. But then they they And then like two years later back. they were back. <laughs> <laughs> There's a there was a surprise reunion show. I think Prince did, did that famously where he's like, I'm yeah. done. And then he was back in a year or two. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think at probably at that time all of those musicians were like, I really do want to say goodbye. And then maybe they get that artistic spark that muse hits them and they're like oh fuck i gotta yeah i think we can all relate to that you know that spark when you get hit with something you're like oh god i gotta get back out there now well and and i think there's been a ton of bands and groups out there that have have broken up and we've just never known about it right and they, yeah they just don't publicly talk about it yeah a lot of bands now they say they're on hiatus talk about it yeah they, they just, just and, and, and honestly that's Okay, I don't think it's anybody's yeah. really business. I mean, yeah, however they want to do it, don't care. It's yeah, their your it's way. Their, it's their stuff. It's their music. They do what they want to do. So yeah, I think that's a good segue to this famous epilogue. So they actually did it in a very Daft Punk way. And go yeah. ahead and tell the tell the good people what you saw in epilogue, Buck. I saw a horrific robot explosion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean basically, this it's, is this is robot robot brutality it's robot brutality we're we're not gonna take this it's 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 violence on on screen no no Uh, sum it up in one 
sentence. You so know? the the sentence is it's basically um you, you see the robots meet each other, one starts walking off the other one stops and uh uh-huh. he basically puts him in self destruct mode and and self slows up and then you see uh the other robot walk off into the sunset. And then there's a title card of their years together as a duo. 1993 to 2021. Uh, yeah, and their little, you know, pyramid hand um gesture thing they do. <laughs> uh with both their hands, the gold and the silver. And then yeah, the, And then this uh, one is Wu Tang. That's Wu Tang, yep. And their famous publicist, I forgot her name, but uh, she did confirm it. She says, yes, uh, no explanation was given, nope. no reason. They just said, we're we're walking away. We're saying goodbye to, to, to everybody as the duo Daft Punk. That's even their, I, on Spotify, that's their title card now. Is that? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I was like, I, I searched, when I searched them, I was like, oh, wow, they've already updated that. It says 1993 to 2021. Like, we're done. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, uh, before... We talk about uh, some very notable uh, acts that they clearly influence, just like Kraftwerk and other people influence them. They influence a ton of acts that we are, we love and are near and dear to our hearts. Before we talk about them, I feel like we're I feel like we're at a eulogy. Like any last words, Buck? Is there any last? I I mean, everybody already knows that this is one of the most influential acts of all time in regards to yeah. dance music and just music as a whole. I mean, there's not much more to be said. Uh, we will love them for all time. Yep. I, I think you're right. It's, 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 uh, it's always been, you know, when you kind of look back on a lot of these bands and especially after they have broken up and yeah, there's that sadness, but what a privilege that we had to at least yeah. hear yeah. what they produced. I mean, Absolutely. that's the thing. And that's the last thing you know that's legacy. Why it's a legacy show yeah. right they're always going to be remembered for this content and how they influenced everybody and, right. and like i said earlier you have a lot of these bands that just will not stop making music because i f- feel like they don't know and some of it's good some of them are good but i, I uh, what right. i'm thinking about is you know going back to my dad and like the bands he loves which are all like hair bands and um, <laughs> hair metal. like 80 and metal and just hair like metal. Come on, hair let's metal. Be, let's let's get more. Yeah. Def Leopard. Um, so uh but <laughs> hey, you know, I like the crew. There's some there's hair metal I like. Oh yeah, I know. I crew, don't get me wrong, like their like stuff the is good. But yeah. when you're in your late sixties right. and you're still trying when to grunge, like one one album, Nirvana's never mind was just like you guys are fucking done. Just just yeah. take a just get on the just, bench and just stay there. Just sit there. Well, you we don't see, see that there. really anymore, too. Uh, just to take no. a tangent for a minute, we 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 don't have like that one album that was like, nope, we're not doing this shit anymore. Now it's yeah. this times, you know. Now it's grunge in that example. Grunge. So <laughs> I, I'm surprised that that musical movement never kind of came back. Um, with with uh, all the '90s saw, stuff coming in, like uh, the, the fashion Black Keys, again. You know, we saw some blues a little rock, bit, a little bit, but yeah, not not. It's uh, there's there's actually famous uh, historians and books written about this subject where there was a time uh, sociologists can mark times in history uh, with musical movements and hip hop and rap has changed the landscape forever. There really hasn't been mm-hmm. anything to topple that that kingdom. Yeah, for, it's, for a good reason. You know, we love we love hip hop and rap, but, you know, we love our beats. Yeah, that's right. So as a love legacy, the Migos. That's right. Uh, as a legacy episode, uh, let's talk about who they influenced. Uh, I did want to touch on uh, this a little bit before we get to the gym of the week. Um, obviously, like Buck was joking about, LCD Soundson was clear. They have their first <laughs> single hit. I would say Tribulations was their real first hit. But yeah, Death Punk is playing at my house is uh, is one of them. Obviously, they worked with Kanye on Yeezus and some other stuff. Obviously, Stronger before that, The Weeknd and Starboy. And then we already talked about Dead Mouse. They were clearly influenced by Daft Punk. Uh, Skrillex, Disclosure, Justice. Uh, justice. Is there Justice, yeah. We're, we love Justice. I love me some Justice. Are you not a big Disclosure fan? No, yeah, it was more of the Skrillex. I was making that fit because... Oh. Really, really like Skrillex at first, and then I started listening. Well, to his dubstep music and it just is important all the same. in EDM history, isn't it? Is, is it not? Is I mean, Skrillex, really I feel like, was the guy for a while. Like when I think of dubstep, I think of burial, and I feel like yeah. Well, 
Uh, we don't have to get into a, a semantics a potato potato long winded argument. We're already at the end of the episode, music. so we'll yeah we'll we'll put burial in there too. And some yeah. I mean whoever you want to add, fuck. I mean I I I just added. The first thing that popped in my head, but there's a ton of fucking right. There's like endless. Thing. Oh yeah, like, no, no, no. What I'm saying, too. like, yeah, no. EDM. I think if if you look at any like, is it David Guetta? Uh, is that yeah. how you say his last name? Guetta, Guetta. Yeah, I know you're talking about those guys. Yeah, I think any of those guys, like right now, I I think they they would like all Calvin Harris. Those yeah, guys. I think they they would all say, um yeah, I Daft was influenced Punk was, by Daft Punk. Yeah, yeah. like, and that's okay. I mean, yeah, and I'm not saying anything bad against it. I was I was just more uh, giving Skrillex a hard time, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, Give him a hard time. Yeah, no, he's got no. the money. He's got the money. He, the dude, he he's he's just he's he's still rolling in that cash. Yeah, he's still um, he's still. Uh, is there anybody else uh, to 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 really hit here before we go into the gym? No, I, I think I think my gym. I'll hit on another group. Okay. So thank you so much for listening. That was the legacy of Daft Punk. But before we go, we got a little something extra for you, a little icing on the cake, a little cherry on top that we call the gym of the week, where we like to talk about a little extra something that didn't quite fit into the show, but nonetheless is connected to it somehow, or sometimes it's not at all. Uh, I actually have two. One that I've just been falling in love with is absolutely not connected, and that is the Amazon TV show The Boys, which is like an R-rated mcu uh take on superhero um drama and it's absolutely been so great to get into the first season i can't wait to see what comes next but something that's very connected to uh so check that out obviously something that's very connected to uh daft punk that i'm i'm late to the party you buck you probably already know this guy is Kavinsky. i Mm. have really fallen in love with his work in the last year and i have listened to outrun about a million times and he has that 80s era aesthetic right to his look. And I think he's like a European guy, but he kind of likes that American 80s era aesthetic with uh, that certain night call. Yeah, kind of look uh, to, to, mm-hmm. his, uh, to his aesthetics, if you will. And I absolutely love him. I, I learned, I did learn this. He used to open for Daft Punk. Oh. Back in the day. Yeah. Did not know that. Yeah. So he is very connected to him. And I'm just late to the party. But if you don't know who Kavinsky is, check out his album Outrun. 2013 buck your turn yeah so i i've mentioned them as one of kind of as one of the gyms before um in our david bowie episode where i said you should go check out their compilation of david bowie music but another uh realm of that european kind of house uh dance music but also are i've made rock albums before but um I, i'm gonna say both of their names that they go by soul wax and too many djs soul wax yeah soul wax yeah they 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 basically they go by two different names their band is basically soul wax but they they're famous for doing a lot of uh remixes as well um so they've done stuff for lcd sound system for justice Mm, i didn't know that um dj shadow uh, um a a lot of they've, they've done a lot of really famous um uh remixes between the two uh there are too many djs uh i won't I will always promote this yeah. for so long. Their compilation, especially like under the covers, which is kind of if you like girl talk. Yeah, we like girl talk here. Yeah, if you like girl talk, this is similar in that format where it's a mashup of a whole bunch of different songs. But I've always said they're party. They're just party music. Uh, I can party never music. get over yeah. them. But uh, but yeah, uh, definitely check those guys out. They're from Belgium. I was going to go see them. They were here in Denver, or they were going to be uh last year and then uh the the rona hit so yeah well ruined everything Bummer. but it's getting better yeah well if uh if you like that you you can of course check out our stuff uh, and follow us at underscore novo underscore day novo is n-o-v-o and day is just d-e and at novo day media You can also follow us at NovoDayProductions.com, where you'll find some of our work, which includes the Entropy Sessions, soon to be released on audio, Adulteration and Post Meridium, and so much more to come. And until next time, be good to each other. As always, good luck, Godspeed, we love you. Art of the Beholder is brought to you by NovoDay Productions. 
created and hosted by Novo Day and the Novo Day Collective. Facebook.com slash Novo Day Media, at Novo Day Media on Twitter and Instagram. Edited, mixed, and mastered by Philip Church. Facebook.com slash Philip Church Pro VO Nerd. Music by A Company. Facebook.com slash Aco Music 123. Aco on Spotify. Logo design by Tom Justice, J E 